there, everyone, and welcome back to Tier No The Lost of Europe. I'm your host, Mr. Vladimir the Third Lover. But right now, the Americans allow us an assembly. Excellent news. Am Americans have extended diplomatic recognition to us and approved a request to construct an embassy within Washington. We'll begin doing so with all haste. This opportunity is too valuable to permit delay, with American recognition, therefore, in and in short order. Recognition from the OFN and the legitimacy of the sovereignty and the Tsar have been hugely, hugely, bigly increased. Even now, the, then we are receiving requests from numerous smaller nations to begin trade negotiations. This will significantly benefit our nation in almost every aspect, and we owe it all to the superb efforts of the Imperial Diplomatic Corps. America welcomes us to its shores. Of course, we're still doing uh, a trip to Madrid, which we read last time, so if you want to read that one, please go right ahead. But I honestly can't remember since... Uh, which one we did last, but the Imperial Russian Navy. It has been nearly 40 years since a vessel bearing the flag of an Imperial Russia sailed the seas, with the capture of major ports during our regional consolidation. This should, of course, be rectified. An investment will be therefore made in the development of naval technology, and the administrative infrastructure needed for a navy will be created. We may not be able to match the size of the major navies for many years to come, but we can promote and protect trade, secure our territorial waters, and carry a flag around the world, making the return of the Tsar known at all. The misadventures of Boris... Uh, oh, look at this. If you're worried about uh, a decrease in poverty, please go right ahead. Boris... Skolstrev. Ah, yes. Returning to Iberia for the first time in many years, Boris stepped out of the plane and shook hands with Francisco Serrano, the Iberian representative. Exchanging pleasantries in Spanish, a language Soskrev, a Skolstrev, had not practiced in a long time, they proceeded to Serrano's vehicle and began driving towards Madrid's city center. As he did, Skolstrev could tell that Serrano was distant and he thought he knew why. Francisco, he began, I want this mission to be successful and so I think we should address history. Serrano did not respond as he continued. That affair with Andorra was many, many years ago. Why, I'm sure the new bishop didn't even remember what happened. And you know, if you could help smooth over any lingering feelings from others, I would be most appreciative. Serrano's eyes left the row for a moment as he quickly inspected the thickly wrapped a roll of money that Skolstrev had removed from his pocket. Are you trying to bribe me, Skolstrev? He chuckled. Nobody remembers Andorra, and I just haven't driven in some time. And if that was your intention, then you should have uh, thought harder on it. Well, Russian money doesn't have a very, very favorable exchange rate. So Skolstrev looked down at his bills in disbelief. Rubles! What good was a counterfeiting operation if it didn't even have, didn't even print the right money? As Skolstrev cursed his reliable counterfeiter back in Arkhangelsk, Serrano continued driving. Why do we have to send him? Nice. Increase foreign trade modifier. Our Roman holiday, Italy thought, though once among the nations that invaded our land, is and remains the most powerful monarch in Europe in many ways. It exemplifies the Tsar's own goals, a strong and prosperous land with large swaths of territory in which uh, to secure resources, and with a loving people democratically participating in government under a respected king. We will therefore reach out to them. Members of the diplomatic corps will travel to Rome and attempt, with all effort, to secure formal relations with them. If they are successful, a corresponding increase in international legitimacy, along with future beneficial trade prospects, can of course be realized. Which will hopefully be exactly what we want. Followed up with the Imperial Air or Imperial Russian Air Service. Well, I apologize if I've read these before. I honestly can't remember if I have or not, so. My memory is. No. Okay. The particulars of Western Russia made it for many years extremely difficult to maintain an air force of any kind. German interdiction, maintenance, and training, and material production and repair were all often, at least partially, beyond our resources. That situation has now changed considerably, with the sovereignty now unified and at least relatively secured. Our time has come to invest in the creation of a formal air service through direct state investment in aeronautical technologies. Though any such service will begin small and likely remain so for some time to come, our soldiers and civilians alike can take heart in the knowledge that their brave compatriots fly high above, protecting them from harm and inflicting the same on the enemy. Which is a great, 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 great thing. Better cast? Oh, yes, please. As we did, of course, last time, defeat Omsk. Ah, uh, because they kind of sucked. And they made a very, very, very poor choice. So where are we at now? 1.53 billion is not bad. We're still building up a lot of cities. Yes, we are. That's so beautiful. What are we missing out right now, though? Uh, main battle tanks, which makes sense. Ooh, we have anti... Yeah, ooh. That is not bueno. We're going to need a lot of that for the uh, German boys. Uh, go down to three lines. But Roman Holiday... Tsar Vladimir excused himself from his handlers for a moment and moved to sit on a bench overlooking the Italian capital. Though he knew Russia had improved tremendously from where it was once, it had nothing like Rome, nothing like skyscrapers, nothing like the number of cars, and above all else, noting nothing like the feeling of tranquility. He wished he could spend more time in this beautiful city, but he reminded himself he was not here for a vacation. He was here for his people. He was here to obtain both diplomatic recognition and economic opportunity. But progress had been slow and he was frustrated, no matter how much his advisors reminded him that that was such was normal when it came to diplomacy. And so his mind wandered towards reflecting on the beauty of Rome. One day he promised himself Russia would have building cities like this. Would it have already been possible and not had not the communists and then the Germans not destroyed everything in their path if his family kept the throne. He pressed those thoughts aside and instead pictured a Vyaka dominated by skyscrapers. He liked that thought. Yes. Swedish royal 
Swedish royal ties. The Kingdom of Sweden, one of the few European nations to escape the grip of German tyranny, is an ideal candidate for one of our first diplomatic overtures. King Gustav VI Adolf, though himself a constitutional monarch, is reportedly a measured character and the country's lack of alignment with one, any one, geopolitical faction ensuring that we will not make the enemies or make enemies by extending relations. The decision has therefore been made for the Tsar himself to visit the country, departing by ship from Archangels. He will visit not only facility uh, not only facilitate the drafting of formal recognitions and trade agreements with the Swedes, but will also act to further strengthen our legitimacy on the world stage, which is a good thing. Keep improving them guns. And civvies. Nice. And invest in Ismek. If Hesk, a mechanical plant has for many years, been a key factor in proper equipping, and thus victory of the Imperial military. With the resources of the sovereignty now at our disposal, the plant can be both invested in and expanded upon in order to compound the advantages it offers us. With the expansion of the industrial facilities at and around the complex, we will greatly expand the state's ability to produce the vast amounts of equipment needed for modern warfare and our eventual drive to the east. All that is needed is the Tsar's word. Absolutely. And what are we for society, actually? Uh, it's not bad. Primary schooling is okay. Modern research facilities are not too bad either. That's pretty nice, actually. Mass mechanization will get there quickly enough. Poverty is slowly getting better, of course. And just equipment, we're about to get two factory complexes, which is not bad. Could be better. 10% more factory output, though, is pretty good. Uh, not bad, not bad. This is going up by how much? Four? Well, it's okay. It's definitely okay. We're at 1.18 billion? Not bad, my friends. Not bad at all. As the Tsar's motorcade arrived at the Royal Palace in Stockholm, he could not but be impressed at the simple beauty. The beauty of a palace never sacked by revolutionaries, at least so far. He did his best to show an air of detachment, but in truth he was very nervous. He was meeting another royal, and he had to show both his and Russia's strength, respectfully shown towards the king's study. Where the real discussion would take place, he prepared himself. King Gustav received him warmly, speaking excellent Russian. More warmly than he expected, it soon became evident that the king greatly enjoyed receiving someone, especially another royal, who was not part of Germany's sphere before long Vladimir knew he had found strong common ground with Sweden, and discussions turned to trade. Days before end, the deal had been struck with Russian, Russian resources, particularly oil, in exchange for Swedish technical expertise and investment. An excellent trade indeed. Our place in the world. The frenzied efforts of the Imperial Diplomatic Corps over recent months have proved in general to be highly successful. Despite some failures encountered, by and large, the state has seen the development of successful trade relations with both major and minor countries, the expansion of formal recognition, and more besides. As we continue to expand our temporal authority, both over our own lands and those of the East, there will no doubt be more diplomatic challenges encountered. But just as they have so far, the Diplomatic Corps will overcome them in the name of the state and the Tsar. But if you'd like to read about better industrial equipment, please go right ahead. Like I said, 10% more factory output, docker output plus 20%, but whatever. Uh, more construction speed, uh, resource efficiency gain. Oh, you can prepare for war. This is exactly why we wait for this, so we get all these benefits. So, land forts, land forts, army XP, the recon companies, air bases, free infrastructure. I um, it's so great. It's, it's, it's just, it's so good, so good. Just yes, just yes. A new generation of officers. As the upper command structure of our military ages, it is critical that we ensure that there is a new generation of innovative, loyal, and scout officers to replace them. The creation years ago of the Vyatka General Staff Academy has helped tremendously in this effort, but as our nation has grown, so too have the requirements for leadership. Investments must be made. The operating budget of the Academy will therefore be greatly increased, allowing it to not only graduate more officers for command, but also provide them with superior training in the many fields to which an officer must be made aware. When we begin our drive to the care that stars flag with the Pacific, uh, we can be confident that the best officers in Russia will lead the charge. And I apologize. I just clicked on it and I'm like, oh wait, who got elected? What do we have here? Construction? Yes. So who's the leader now? Ah, Goldwater! Bennett got actually elected earlier, so he must have really screwed up. Sub subsidy spree, the American Malays. United somewhat. Took in civil rights. Wait, we got took in civil rights with Wallace. Not bad. And free manpower. Like, that free manpower is just too good to pass up, man. It's just too good to pass up. Thank you, come again. The Empire and, of course, the world. Oh! Nice! We could boost this up, but I'm not going to. The focus and determined efforts by the Imperial Diplomatic Corps on orders from the Tsar and the government have been met with significant success. To many nations, we are now viewed as a legitimate government of Western Russia, and thus implicitly as a likely candidate for national reunification. Our relations outside of the German sphere of influence, both in Europe and elsewhere, have become much stronger now we stand far apart from the many statelets that came before us. This increase in international political relationships was also matched by a corresponding increase in economic relationships as well. The vast resources of our lands have found many markets abroad, and both technical expertise and foreign capital flows back to the sovereignty in return, providing opportunities and prosperity both for our government and the millions of Russians besides. Truly a great success, and a portent of futures to come. Does that modify, like, the trading thing? Does that help us at all? Like, foreign, okay, though, so, oh my god, yes, that does help out. Oh, that's so nice. 
but upgrading our designs, or updating them. The near total destruction of Western Russia's industrial and academic base resulted in, among other things, a consequent lack of innovation in military designs. Many patterns were copied from foreign sources, or crude makeshift solutions produced in a decentralized manner. Our current position, however, allows us to rectify that. Investments will be made in the design of various materials, types of materials, and coordination councils with military manufacturers will be formed in order to promote the physical production of them. In this way, we will ensure that the Russian designs are built by Russian factories for a Russian army experiencing Russian conditions. Truly, we cannot ask for more. Someone asks, one of the comments from yesterday saying, because at the time of this recording, tomorrow, be, uh, at the time of this recording, of course, uh, will be the update for TNO. So, someone asks, am I rushing videos out? No, not really, actually, at all. Um, I already planned this campaign's going to be only three episodes long, so am I rushing? Not at all. Not at all. Not, not, not at all. Uh, someone says, I should play the Iron Curtain Cold War mod and play as India, if they have a unique focus stream. So, hey, maybe eventually. I don't know, but maybe eventually. The Imperial Army marches forward after, of course, we improve our planes. Yes, as we've been doing quite well with our planes, of course. Um, it is only 69. Nice, but we have a lot of things to still improve upon. As a result of our doctrinal equipment and leadership reforms and investments, we have once again achieved a remarkable modernization and professionalization of the Imperial military. Operational plans are drawn and executed faster. Administrative staff control formations has improved and the disposition of our forces have been considerably strengthened. The military stands prepared and ready to begin the inevitable campaigns of national reunification, and though none can say what or who it will face, all we can say is that they are confident in the ability to achieve victory in the name of the Tsar. Just click them all, because we have got more than enough PP and I don't know what to do with it. Where do we stick our PP? That is always a good question. Followed up with connecting our realm. The widespread destruction of national infrastructure is another legacy of the chaos that once engulfed Western Russia, and this severely limits the civilian economy, both in absolute size as well as in expansion and development potential. Thus, the focus will be placed on the construction of new railroads and highways between our major economic centers and ports. This will promote the movement of people and goods as rapidly as possible and in large grouping as possible, and so encourage further economic expansion within the sovereignty. Uh, get some good engineers. We're going to need those guys eventually anyway, so we might as well get them now. Um, yes. And I do, I'm taking time to, before we, like, cross the Urals or whatever, or reunify Russia so we can get as many social benefits, or societal benefits, as we can possibly get. Good. Another comment was, why would I make this campaign before the TNO Toolbox Theory update drops? Uh, I'm making it because, I don't know, I want to go back to Vyaka and try a different route out just because they were, this was literally my first campaign I did playing as Vyaka, and I had no idea what I was doing. I think I titled the first video, like, Welcome to Russia Battle Royale, because I had no idea what I was doing, and I want to make sure I can do these. Uh, we started with this campaign. We started with Vyaka, and I want to end with Vyaka. I just feel like it's a good way to close, at least in my mind, really, the first huge, extremely major expansion, well, maybe not extremely huge, but major expansion for TNO with the economic update and stuff like that. But, Russia's, Russian business has, for a long time, barely existed. Owners lost their factories either to communist expropriation or German bombers, but times have changed. And there were even relatively short times since unification. We have observed the organic development of small-scale industry among some of our more enterprising citizens. This presents an opportunity. By investing in these businesses and subsidizing the formation of new ones, we can accelerate the generation of domestic industry by citizens rather than by direct government intervention. The Imperial Recovery Committee has been very clear that such is the pathway towards true economic growth, and neither we nor the Tsar have any reason to disagree. Absolutely. And see? P poverty? Yes. Cross the Urals? We are going to cross the Urals, my friends, and we won. Yay! Good job, guys. Good job. Um, ooh. ooh. Look at all that space we can build in. We'll build some more later in a little bit, but... Uh, you know what? We can build faster. Why not? Screw it. It's going to cost us a little bit more, but that's okay. So I think that's all the focuses besides the stuff for the economic tree, which it looks like it is. So, unfortunately... We're going to hurt a PP, which is fine at this point, because we have so much PP already. It hurt construction speed, which sucks. A little bit. It hurts our stability, which sucks. And factory output, we get more money. The Ministry of Finance was originally established to manage the economy of the lands in and around Biaka during the days of the German bombing campaigns. Those days are long past, but the Ministry is still organized as it was at the time, in a fashion wholly unsuited to the administration of an economy on a truly national scale. At the request of the Imperial Recovery Committee, the Ministry will be restructured, instituting proper local, regional, and national hierarchies to better address the economic concerns of different national areas. It will also assess the skills of its employees and hire new ones in order to ensure efficient and continued operations across the entirety of our territory. Yes. Keep working on them guns. Like, Vyaka has a lot of strength. Like, the devs, as I said in the last episode, they, they love doing what they do. And it shows how much love they put into Vyaka, which is, I think, awesome. Just awesome, 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 awesome. So, well, maybe, maybe that's just me. 36 combo with. Oh, we need a little more army XP, didn't we? 
Nice. Not bad. Uh, we'll maybe throw some other stuff over there. And we'll do that one. Unfortunately. But fortunately. Honestly, like, when I see this, I'm just like... This seems like a very erect tank. I'm just going to put that out there. It's a very erect tank. Make some people happy. Whatever. Cool. And let's make some of these guys, too. I love SP artillery. So we can't do that one, or this one, like I said last time, but we'll do economic liberalization. The victory of the cadets under Roman Gul at the Congress of Alagdas paved the way for the integration of economic liberalization into the policies of the Imperial Recovery Committee. With a focus on encouraging the free market principles, ending austerity measures, and normalizing the markets, the cadets are hopefully or hopeful that the sovereignty's economy can be induced to rapid, rapidly expand and reap a subsequent reward. Good, good, good. Just go and do that one, it's fine. Let's prove ourselves anyway, industrially. It's fine, too. Plenty of tanks, but eventually we're not going to have enough tanks. Let's, I'm going to be real here. We're never going to have enough tanks. We're doing quite well on anti-air for now. Once we get enough, we will never need any, any extra, so... Also, like I said earlier, like in the last... Uh, at least the last episode, we waited to get the Miracle in the Vyatka for rapid uh, poverty rate because we already got to 25 to 50%, so... That's why I waited that long. And I knew we would get it, so... Always thinking ahead here. Well, maybe not always, but occasionally. Republican victory? Very nice. A liberal economy. Yes, please. This is going to help out a lot, or quite a bit more, for when you take out the Germans. Do I need to do agriculture? I mean, we have so much political power, it doesn't even matter. Not really, no. But the miracle in the Vyatka. The efforts of the Imperial Recovery Committee have, despite some political opposition, had a real and significant impact on the overall economic health of the sovereignty. Domestic product has risen sharply, and the sophistication of our industry has increased, and the foreign capital is finally once again entering Russia. These advances, combined with the dramatic increase in administrative efficiency, as resulting from further reforms, has provided the nation with a robust and future-oriented industrial base by which to effect eventual unification. The Tsar has put in motions for each and every member of the committee to receive a national award, presented by himself. If a soldier can receive a medal for helping one fellow Russian, so too can the committee for helping millions. And there goes Iberia, fallen into, well, disarray. And you know what? We probably all saw that one coming. Because yeah, Iberia's not easy. Ooh, actually, I thought... Toolbox here, they're getting rid of market liberals later, maybe? Maybe not. I could be wrong about that, but... Hmm. Should have played as a market lib group, but whatever. 8.3% is not bad, especially if we can continue cutting down the, the, the debt. It's not much we can cut down by, but, you know, whatever. Whatever. Are we still missing stuff? Oh, anti-tank. Oh my gosh. A lot of anti-tank. Anti-air. Definitely anti-tank, which sucks, too. The Miracle Niviatko. But again, this extra apple would be helpful. I think our time is really nice. We're getting these guys all back at the same time. It's so good. So good. We could boost up military spending, but whatever. We'll get these factories. We'll core uh, Ka uh, Kazakhstan. Uh, I, I'd rather fight the CSR, maybe... They do have, like I said, a severe implant, but did they make this? Oh, 27%? That's really... That's, that's, that's not good, right? 27% consumer goods is not good. I don't want to fight these guys, though. I really don't want to fight, because his divisions can be pretty darn strong, and they're not fun to fight sometimes. We're out of manpower, too, which sucks. God dang it. Miracle no Vyatka. On the, on the Vyatka? Yeah. I don't know how to spell that word wrong. Vyatka wrong. Hmm. There you go. Hmm. Cass, Cass, yes. Make sure everyone's got at least a little bit of Cass. Oh, I got two planes there. That sucks. All right, and there we go. So now we're done with this part of the focus sheet. So we can just go ahead and uh, reunify Russia. Hey, twenty percent more stability. Yay! The Russian Empire is reborn, my friends. Just, just go in. No one cares. If you're agree about this, please go ahead. Because that is still pretty much... All these are just pretty much the same in Generico stuff, so I'm not really too concerned about these ones. So I've read them plenty enough times, but if you'd like to read them, you can always pause the video and, you know, do that. So. Nice. Oh, look at that manpower. Yeah, we unify and we get to that. Huh? If you want to read about an End of Wonders, please go ahead, too. Nice. Free manpower, man. I'll take it. I will go, 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 gladly take it. That's still going the same as it was earlier, which sucks, but whatever. 
Alright, so. Oh, so the budget boost. You know what? We'll keep spending it up. We're still building stuff, so. For the benefit of the motherland, it is a new day for all the peoples of the Empire. With the victory of the Congress and the confirmation of our government's control over the entire region, we can now turn our attention to the reforms desperately needed within it. The many issues that contributed so much to the inequality and unjust nature of the old empire, and thus led directly to the uprisings and revolutions that ended it, can now be addressed. Corruption, economic malaise, poverty, and rights for the many minorities within our borders can and will be focused upon, and in doing so, we will make Russia a more equitable and fair nation. How many divisions did we make? Just one. Wish we had more, but that's okay. Yeah, because these guys are 40 combos, so not bad. Look at that lag. Wow. Okay, it's lagging extremely hard. Okay, there we go. Okay, I can do this up. Yeah, fine. Just go straight on in. No one cares. Um, reach to the Tsar. Do not forget the poor man, yeah. Within our newly unified lands, there are millions of Russians who suffered under regimes that cared little for either their fortunes or their suffering. Who watched their meager holdings destroyed under the years of German bombings alongside? We cannot tolerate this situation any longer. For the sake of all of our people, and to set an example to those to be soon be liberated, we must invest into social services of all kinds. So lifted out of poverty, these millions will then improve themselves, uh, contribute to the nation, and raising the potentials of all, and adjust to the people. Evening had returned to the city of Perm, ending another day of destruction. Destruction of the horrid legacy of the hated Aryan Brotherhood, a necessary task both for Russia and for those who had lived in a once grand city that could in time be grand again. On the city's outskirts, Alexander Medvedev returned home, having paid respects to his late wife. As he had every night since the election of Prime Minister Gul and his cadets, Medvedev prepared a simple meal and sat down in front of the radio, but unlike every night, there was a speech by that same Prime Minister about the broadcast, and after a short transition, the speech began. Good evening, fellow citizens, Gul began. I speak to you tonight as your Prime Minister to offer a promise. A promise that that I can affirm before all the peoples of Russia, from Akongos to Samara, from Moscow to Vladivostok, that you shall know a better tomorrow. My government, working closely with the Tsar, a man whose dedication to liberation has never waved or wavered, will act to ensure the fundamental and deserved freedoms of every citizen in the empire. It matters not one's faith or culture, for they and you be Russians all. Russians all who will one day or soon live in peace and prosperity under the imperial flag. Though Medvedev's radio was a simple one, even he could hear the sincerity in Gold's words ring out across the room, and for the first time since the Tsar's authority had returned to Perm, he felt hope. He knew that the rest of Russia could not feel but the same. Hope returns to Russia, at least for now. We'll build the empire. Oh, that's not bad. Ooh, ooh can you do this one? The imperial economy has expanded dramatically over the course of our regional unification. Industrial expansion, trade connections, and the integration of our workforces have brought our people to great prosperity, especially in comparison to those around us. However, we are no longer a small nation of limited means, and the needs and challenges of our economic paradigm have changed dramatically. We must therefore reforge and refocus our economic plans and procedures to address them. Our budget will therefore be amended to fund integrated uh, industrial ventures across the nation and reduce the barriers that impede business growth. Absolutely. A letter from Skostryev to Tsar Vladimir the Third, Tsar of all Rus, by the grace of God, conqueror of the Bolsheviks and vanquish, vanquisher of traitors. I, Boris Skostryev, dearly request lordship of the city of Omsk and its surrounding territories, as well as the title of prince and his bountiful rewards. It is known to me that you are in need of assistance in governing the newly annexed territories, and it is my wish to serve as your vassal in governing the city of Omsk. It has always been my dearest wish to serve amongst the monarchy of Russia as a high nobleman, and it has been among my life struggle. I will pledge my eternal loyalty to you in return for my lordship. I also pledge that Omsk will be transformed into the most prosperous and the Tsardom under my rule, and you will see the great bounties of my leadership. I do request that you remember my servitude for you while you deliberate this decision and recall how loyal I was to you in times of struggle. If you grace me with your greatness, I will surely pay it back in full. Your esteemed chief foreign minister, former Prince of Andorra, former Count of Orange, Baron Boris Mikhailovich Skostryev Mavrusov. Who does he think he is? He thinks he's a dude. As we're building up more roads, too. Yes, lots of roads. If we're going to be known for anything... At least on this channel, we are known to build roads even when we don't need the roads. The trains will run on time no matter what. But, and rebuilt the spoiled lands. Mm, honestly, do we even want to do that one? I mean, I guess we're on mass mechanization. We're almost there. We should wait a little bit. Uh, bring enemy to ruin. Oh, yes. No, I bet in the disenfranchised. One of the most repulsive practices of the old empire was its treatment of minority populations, wanting to only live in peace and in accordance with their traditions. They were oppressed and marginalized without pause, and when they eventually inevitably revolted, they were slaughtered in mass. We will not allow this to happen again. From this day forward, minorities within the empire will be permitted in limited self-governance and autonomy, and these rights will be enshrined in law. Russia is a country for all of its inhabitants, and we will prove that. Equal rights. Oh, no. Equal rights. Do we believe in equal rights? For this campaign, we do. 
Boris got got. We received the news that our chief foreign officer, Boris Kostryev, who was sent to the U.S. on a regular diplomatic mission to the country, has been arrested by U.S. agents in the port on his way to return to Russia. Arrested for attempting to smuggle drugs out of the country, is currently being held in an American jail. One of his assistants has reported back saying to us he just wanted to have a good time. Sent to further relations with the U.S. and the rest of the OFN, appears Boris may not be doing his job that well. We have further reports that Boris spends most of his time partying in America and not actually doing his job. Oh, God. Reportedly, he spends most of his time uh, partying in the States and going to nightclubs, but at this point, what else should we expect? It'll be costly to get him out of the country free of any charges, but we should have enough good dealings with the U.S. to get him out with only a monetary price. Some of our ministers are saying that we should have just leave him there, as he is more of a hindrance than anything. Vladimir III has decided, however, that he will be brought back to Russia. Maybe even he learned something with this this time. With Skostarev, I doubt it. This is still going up slightly more. Hmm. How bad is the thing? Oh, it's pretty bad. We can't cut military spending yet. Yeah. The rights of loyal subjects. Free press, huh? God, that hurts. That's alright. Hey, they, they died. As they should. Yes, 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 yes. Build, build, build. Yes, we love it. Good, good, good. So now all we left is this group to reunify all of Russia before we take out the Germans in the next episode. Because I'm going to save that for the next episode, so... And then, nor lay down the sword. Though it is our intention to focus on the many domestic injustices and inequalities that have long failed to be properly addressed, we cannot and will not forget our mission of reunification. Accomplishing that mission will, however, require a moderate and nationally supportive military, and steps must be taken to ensure the existence of it. Corruptive and reactionary elements have long embedded themselves in the very fabric of our imperial forces, and they continue to distress our institutions. We must eliminate these influences, and in doing so, ensure a military that is politically compliant to the democratically elected government. Oh, look at that. Can we build more civvies? Oh, you bet we are going to build more civvies. And if you want to read about better agriculture methods, please go right ahead. Modern agriculture. Nice. And rebuild the spoiled lamb. Even years removed, the effects visible and otherwise of the decades-long German terror bombing still scar our nation. A complex of regional unification may only amplify them, of course. One of the most important impacts was on the proper utilization of arable land. Much of it currently lies fallow or poorly used. And this is leading to rampant food insecurity across the empire. This must be corrected with all haste. We will invest into agricultural reconstruction and mechanization, and encourage farmers to return to their fields. A sign of better days. As Yakov Rivkin once again walked the streets of Yaka, he could not but help marvel at the exchange or the change that had passed over the city. He saw it with every step. He saw a complete lack of hostile stares that had once followed him. He saw it in the absence of the thugs that had once menaced the Jewish neighborhood. And he saw it as he entered the kosher bush shop on the face of Isaac, whose f f eyes brightened and smiled widened in a way Yakov has not seen in many years. Yakov, Isaac exclaimed, how are you, my friend? Better than I've been in a long time, Isaac. Isaac. Yakov replied truthfully, the days since his vicious beating at the hands of the Russian protective corps brought real change indeed both his life and to those of the wider Jewish population of Yakka. I'll take the usual again. <clears throat> Look at that, order 44. Rahel and I are having dinner tonight. He looked through the window. I noticed that the uh, RPC doesn't seem to be around here anymore. Isaac chuckled rep uh, in reply as he gathered at Yakov's items. Uh, not anymore, no. The police cut them off a short while ago. The Prime Minister seems to be serious about his promises. He continued to bag the goods. You know, I've started seeing more businesses since this election. More Gentiles, even. That surprised Yakov, even if that was most heartening. After bidding the butcher good night, Yakov left to return home. Only now he could take the time to enjoy his walk. A fine night for a home cooked meal! And who will defend the Empire? Though victorious during our re regional unification, the Imperial forces must continue to improve their capabilities if we are to reclaim the lands claimed by rifles. This improvement will require expansion in both men and material. To that end, we will increase funding dedicated to the expansion of productive capacity by doing so. We will ensure that as more men are acquired and recruited and trained, the weapons and equipment required to provision them are available. General Nikolai Rumyantsev had been a soldier for most of his life, first to the French and now to the Tsar in that time, though. He has grown to know well both the heights of the valid and depths of depravity of man. He remembered the righteous anger that had driven him for so long from France proper to the heck of North Africa, even when all it seemed and truth was lost. And now, he's, as he observed the new recruits observing their basic training, he felt a deep melancholy. He believed in Tsar Vladimir's uh, cause to secure a future for the lands of his ancestors, but he could not forget the lives that had already been lost in pursuit of it, and of those who would be further lost as we continue that pursuit. Especially once the inevitable campaign to secure the German-occupied lands to the west began. The boys in front of him were strong men, driven by a righteous anger, and they would be well-trained. But he knew that they were not ready to face the true depravity of the German menace, not ready for the meat grinder that they would be thrown into. But he would not allow that to stop him. The final day, or the day of final showdown between Russia and Germany, was fast approaching, and he would prepare them that for that as best as he was able to. 
our work will never be done and to bring ruin to the enemy. Despite all our reforms and advancements, the fact remains that the Imperial forces as they exist are simply not the equal of those of other major powers. This is especially true in the case of advanced weapons and strategic capability. If we want to be accepted as a greater even regional power, we must act decisively to continue our programs of modernization and technical innovation. Additional fundings and resources will be made available for this purpose. That extra attack is going to be very beneficial when we attack the Germans. Hey, look, manpower! At least for now. We only have 45 million people here. Holy crap, that's not enough. That is just not enough. Nice. Go ahead and work on that for now, that's fine. Minus rebuilding is very nice, though. And for the eternal Russian Tsar. The Empire lives once again. Though lost once to the fires of revolution, invasion, and civil war, the spirit of monarchism imbued with liberalism, preserved in the figures of the Tsar and our government, both has proven stronger than all. Our military stands supreme within Russia. Our pros progressive government is working to ensure the prosperity and democratic rights of all its citizens, and our economy is ever expanding. We stand today a monument to the strength and courage of the Russian spirit for the eternal Russian Tsar. You get a lot more construction speed, too. That's really nice. Not enough divisions yet, but we're working on it. And it looks like these guys are dying, which is nice. Or just kill both of off. That's probably what we're going to do. We could probably kill both off. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, my goodness. Technology. Very good. 1970. Happy 1970, everyone. Ooh, we need to get more um, research speed, too. That'd be very nice. Minus about 1 billion. National debt's not bad. I mean, I wish the, the interest were... It used to be 12%, but now it's down 11%. But I wish it was even lower. But, you know... We do the best we can. Our GDP is pretty good for now. Until I don't know how to do the GDP mechanic at all. Cool. Yeah, we're building up a lot of cities. Holy crap. Research speed. Because we'll be here for a while. Probably until mid-1970s to beat up the Germans. But we'll see. And up next we'll probably do what? Establish coast facilities. I think that'd be a good thing to do next. It's only March. It's almost April, which is nice. And these are, of course, Elite Infantry. Actually, how's this looking for now? Um, still pretty bad. That's actually improving quite a bit. anti air will get there eventually. IFVs, I just don't like IFVs. I don't mind using APCs, though. Why do I not make APCs? Oh, wrong one. Oh, crap. No. There you go. My bad. Oops, well, we lost all that production capabilities, but whatever. I don't care. We got enough guns for now, hopefully. Um, industry stuff? Yes. More output, please, and thank you. Overall, not bad. Uh, we can probably start working on this stuff, too. Yeah. How much manpower do they have? I still need to play as Tomsk again sometime. 14,000 none. They have up to 47 divisions, which is quite a bit. They have up to 54 divisions, which is not bad either. We still have roughly two political power every day, which is really awesome. Ooh, can we get up to Spartan discipline? That'd be really good. We might be able to get up there, actually. We probably actually will. Experience industrial base. We'll get to innovative industry, too. Vyaka is really nice. Uh, anything else? Poverty? Not bad. Eight is pretty gosh darn awesome as well. But, reassure the Tsar. It is no f secret that Tsar Vladimir is not a supporter of our agenda, however. Regardless of his personal opinions, we were chosen by the people to form government, and he must accept this. He must be seen to accept this. We need not force this upon him, and uh, promote further discord. Uh, Prime Minister Goh will make a personal appeal to the Tsar in the interest of the nation, and reassure him that whatever our personal political differences, we only have uh, the Empire's long-term interests at heart. Which would be a good thing to do. Which hopefully we do have long-term interest at heart, so. Awesome. Awesome, 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 awesome. Go on, sir. I'm doing that stuff. That's fine. Good, 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 good. Democrat victory in Spain. Wow, look at that. Good job, guys. Keep building until we can't build anything else. Because we'll go, we'll max it out as much as we possibly can and then do that. Wow. That is purple. Pink purple. One million. That's nice. Wait, so who... Why Why is Catalonia independent? What is wrong with his head? Pretty sure that's our. Reduce Okrana. 
The Ural Drive. Well, look at this. Both Western Russia and Western Siberia are bountiful lands, not only in mineral and agricultural wealth, but in population as well. However, the infrastructure in both regions is terribly underdeveloped, and this leads to the isolation of the same resources and peoples from the state. We must act uh, to reintegrate them through a concerted uh, drive of infrastructural construction, repair, and realignment. Not only will this improve extractive capability, but also show to these peoples that life under the empire is no longer represented by neglect and stagnation, but by investment and internal progress, my friends. Absolutely. Facing reality. The memories of the Russian Empire had one been of absolute power centralized hand in the hands of the Tsar, a dutiful ruler dedicated to his people, a sort of parent figure. At least that's how some people remembered it to be, or how they were taught to think of it as such. Cases like the Tsar Vladimir Romanov, a man born after the fall of autocracy, one that was still clinging on to the ideas of the Tsar being a powerful ruler dutifully working for his people's betterment. Yet that idea was being challenged by Golan's reforms that ever transformed the Russian monarchy into a constitutional one. The Tsar and his prime minister were both sat on an imperial style couch that Vladimir had come into possession of, a memento sort of a bygone era that had never come to know personally. He had arranged a meeting with Ghoul on the matters of privileges accorded to the Tsar's family himself, as fears of those being reduced, if not outright removed, started to plague Vladimir in the last few days. Your Imperial Majesty, I understand that you fear seeing your royal privileges be taken away, especially as powers that were once yours until recent reforms are taken away to alleviate your Majesty's shoulders. However, I can assure you that they shouldn't be taken away, or shan't be taken away in any circumstances, as you remain the Tsar first and foremost, but also because you're a symbol to the people. Vladimir listened with great attention, nodding to Gold's reassurances while a small weight was lifted, being, being lifted off his chest. Perhaps the Prime Minister had not been entirely honest with him, and only time would tell if that was the case, but in this incident, Vladimir had, for the most part, uh, utmost confidence in Gold's words. Reality and fiction are often fickle things. Not bad. Oh, good. Good, 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 good. Modernize the department. Cool, cool, cool. And... Oh, wow. There's a lot of lag. What's going on? Did, uh... Spain fully reunify or something? You do that too. It doesn't really matter. There you go. Thank you. So, ciphers. Oh, you actually did defeat him. Okay. That's not bad. Not bad for them. Anti-tank? Better anti-tank. The Euro Drive, victory in Oman, very nice, very nice. And we'll do this one next. The Trans Russian Railroads. <clears throat> it is undeniable that one of the old empire's greatest achievements was that construction of the Trans-Siberian Railway, linking Moscow and Vladivostok and thus the entire country in a way not before experienced. Were the efforts towards the continued expansion of the state infrastructure, we may be able to connect and integrate both old and new networks. By doing so, and working to create an all-encompassing Trans-Russia Railway will connect our millions of citizens as never before, and enjoy the resulting economic, social, and military benefits it can and will bring. Nice. Advance the phase, yes. Nice. Ah, oh, good. Keep working on that stuff. And where are we on for the debt? Minus 4.2 billion. This is not going up. This is not being reduced by that much because of all the interest. But it still keeps going up, which is really nice. Source for materials, yes, please. Oh, and Iraq has collapsed. I was going to say George Bush, but no, it wasn't George Bush this time. Or Saddam Hussein. This time, at least. Maybe next time. Yeah. And once we max out like all the cities like, building literally everywhere, I will build some millions as well once we get ready to invade uh, Germany. And of course, we'll take out Central Asia, stuff like that. So, um, yeah. We'll, we'll definitely build up our industry more because obviously we need more equipment. Of course, we're going to conquer more equipment too, but still. Still. We need more planes. We just need a lot more stuff in general. Here. Build some millions because we, we, we honestly need them. So, not bad. 83% is pretty darn good, not gonna lie. Yeah, we'll definitely get this one done before we go to war with the Germans. Factory complexes. Poverty. We might even get poverty too, like I said earlier. That'll be good. Academic base. Training center is nice. Good, 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 good. Stuff done soon enough. So, how strong are these guys? Establish close facilities. Of course, a lot of manpower. We have none. They have up to 47 divisions. Salaries are victory in Portugal. Good job. Minus 7 billion. Wow. And. Trans Russian railroads. We're going to reduce the Okran, which kind of sucks because I like a strengthened one, but whatever. Although the Okran has proved itself highly capable in defending the state, it has also proved itself nigh controllable, acting in nearly autonomous fashion with excessive brutality. 
This can no longer be tolerated under administration and possesses or poses a danger to stability besides. We will therefore conduct a full and independent investigation into their operations and affairs and, once completed, drastically reduce their budget. The Okrana will survive, but it will be a smaller and more responsible tool of the state. Which kind of sucks. You get a bad night, but I don't want to lose encryption or decryption. That's actually really strong for us. Yeah, losing that's not very good, but whatever. Oh, look at that. Nice. Are you... Oh, you are SB artillery. Nice. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Oh, actually, it's a little bit way too ahead of time for me, so. Um, that one, no. That's not yes. Guarantee personal freedoms. As the Okrana are returned to proper oversight, control, and position, we must ensure that the legal practices which it allowed become so powerful are amended as well. We'll pass legislation to guarantee more personal freedoms to all citizens, particularly as they relate to unlawful entertainment and the rights when questioned under under questioning or arrest. Those seemingly minor such rights will act in the future to prevent the excesses of the past and therefore protect the democratic state as a whole. Oh my goodness. I don't want to lose more PP, but whatever. Um, we could spend it up, but honestly, we're doing so well, I don't think we need to spend any more, so. A bad night. Sitting just behind a small bronze plaque, Boris Smilslovsky fumed. He'd just been told Ghoul's planning to slash her budget, signific slash her budget significantly down to almost nothing. Men, liberals like Ghoul, were all the same, idealists of failed systems. They believed in redirecting resources from security to social programs. In doing so, all they accomplished, all they had ever accomplished, was to expose the state to subversive agents, to dissidents, to communists. Once Ghoul was through with it, the funding that the Okran received would barely be enough to maintain uh, basic operations, let alone meaningful investigations or recruit agents. What was worse was still, the, still those sympathetic to the Okran's true purpose had told him that Ghoul intended to demand his resignation. Him! He who had built the Okran from nothing to one of the most efficient and feared services Russia had ever seen. He who had protected the state and the Tsar from plots numerous. He who had no intention whatsoever of resigning. But for all of Smilevsky's acumen in the world of intelligence, he was no politician, and when he tried to call the men he thought his allies in an attempt to avoid the inevitable, none would accept his call, and so when the call from the Gold's office finally did come, he had no choice. The Okran had been good, and he could do nothing but accept it. The end of an era, but the rights of loyal subjects. Ever since the initial establishment of imperial rule in Vyakal, all forms of media have been subject to oversight and some measure of state control. It's impossible to truly call oneself a democracy as long as the press is shackled, and so will act to remove those restrictions and introduce legislation protecting the rights of a free press. Although the Tsar is likely to be hesitant in supporting such a move, given previous experiences, we won't press upon him the necessity of such reforms. The rights of citizens to question or criticize their elected government should never be in danger, and free speech must be protected besides. Goodbye, Africa. Oh, we're going to lose so much PP. But who's crying for Africa? Not this guy. Not bad, my friends. Not bad whatsoever. Um, let's go ahead and do that one. Let's see. We also have... Well, we can do that one. Eh, I always like getting more uh, recon anyways. But we'll probably do the Tsar and his people. The Empire rises again, looking to the past for stable institutions while simultaneously looking at the future for modern governance. We're repairing the damage done to our factories and our infrastructure. We're healing the traumas of wars past while also modernizing and enlarging our army for the wars to come. Most importantly, we've confronted the sins of the Tsars and Empire past, taking responsibility, and made amends. All of our efforts have made a real impact on the lives of our citizens, and now many Russians are feeling something they have not felt in for a long time. Optimism! Ah, better anti air because and our enemies are going to have a lot of aircraft because we have, like, none. Keep working on it. Keep working on it. Anything else here? Oh, yes. A few spots here need a little bit more love. Yeah, we'll call it love. That's what we'll call it. Yeah, love. Cut. Oh, that's, that's looking pretty good. It's like a pretty darn good, man. Pretty darn good. I just want to improve society, man. That's all I want. I just want to improve society. And then we'll chase the sun. And just XP will continue to go up, which is actually really good that we waited, dude. Yeah? You can really use that one. Even though we're already done with all of it, so. Go figure. A day to reflect. Tsar Vladimir III sat at his desk, feeling an emotion he had not felt in a long time. True contentment. In the immediate aftermath of the cadets' election, he had been worried. He did not share Gold's political position, and he had thought the stability had fought so far. He had fought so hard for would be threatened, and yet things had turned out well, better than expected. Gold had proven a most capable administrator, and his dedication to ensuring the stability and prosperity of both the state and the Russian people could not be denied. Vladimir knew that, with or without him, the empire would expand and become a better place for all of its people. Russian or otherwise, it would be an empire in which he could be proud to see his daughter grow. As the Tsar thought of that future, however, he also thought of his past. Of the dark days of collaboration, of decisions made in error, of the many questions he had asked himself, and he found that he was closer than ever to answering many of them. The Empire had a long way to go, and he had an even longer road to follow, but he would walk that road he head held high. Vladimir stood, and as he did so, he saw the drawer. He soon realized that he had not taken a pill many days, and realized further that he did not need to. 
the migrants do not come anymore. Today's a good day. Tomorrow will be better. And in the tomorrow, we'll kill off the Siberian Republic. Well, everybody, now we are at war with the uh, Siberian Republic. And looks like uh, we haven't really attacked them at all. But hey, the deficit's looking pretty good. Ten and a half billion. Um, yeah, we'll make it 9.2 billion. Also, there's another comment saying that it's a little sad that I didn't... Wow, holy crap. We just won all those battles. Um, it's kind of sad that I did not show you the first half of the campaign. Yeah, I suppose so. But I need to make sure that this campaign is not that long. Three episodes. And, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I just want to make sure that we can get through the first part pretty quickly. Since I've done it before anyways, but... Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe next time. Because there is the conservative democracy path, which I've not done yet. I've done the authoritarian democrat, authoritarian democracy, now liberal democracy. We cut off a lot of them already. Really flipping fast. What the heck is wrong with you guys? Why are you so sucky? You have manpower. Uh, playing divisions. Well, this will help explain it. They're out... They, they have no guns. Yeah, that would help explain it. Um, it's going a lot better than I thought so far, but it's not over yet, so... Do they have this cord yet? No, they do have this cord. I mean, I guess it is the Siberian Republic. It is Siberia, so what do you expect? Uh, we're doing really, really well, though. Much better than I thought we would. So we have four tank divisions, four normal tank divisions. And then we have... Uh, their cipher done. Okay, yeah. Okay. Uh, we probably need Germany's. We're going to need the Ukraine's. Um, we'll do that, that, that one, that one, that one, that one. But between this up to the next, I'm going to go and take out Central Asia. I'll install the second West Russian War mod so we can take these guys out and core them, get Vladivostok back, hopefully, and just pretty much get ready to go to war with the Germans. I mean, that's pretty much the main goal, so. Focusing very heavily on tanks right now, though, as you can tell. Losses. That's a lot of losses. That's an insane amount of losses this fast. We have upgrades. I mean, we're winning, but... Cool. Mm, not bad. Can you go here? Can you take a buddy with you? Cool. Yeah, four, uh, 500,000. Wow. Half a million losses already. This is a lot easier than I thought it would be. A lot easier. Usually when we fight this destruction, sometimes it's really difficult. It's just not a lot of fun sometimes. Sometimes it is, but sometimes it's not. Here. There's a lot of the roads around here. Because we will need to. Oh. We don't have that much decryption either, so. There you go. Cool. I'm just going to build up these tanks. Just make them as strong as possible. Strong, 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 strong. You know, we don't. We should get some signal companies, maybe. Of course, we have no manpower, which kind of sucks, because we did try to push these guys up quite a bit, but still. Yeah, not bad. Not bad whatsoever. Did I give you orders? Maybe I didn't give you orders. Maybe that's why. Go ahead, guys. Keep going. Keep going. You're doing great. We've only lost 10,000. We've killed off 800, almost 900,000 people. It's a little insane, not gonna lie. Just a little bit insane. Oh, we need to get better tanks. Oh my goodness. Why am I doing all the other stuff but not getting better tanks? What's wrong with me? Moron. Not bad. Not bad. Cut down the debt to less than 4 billion. And they've taken almost a million casualties. Come on. Let's get to a million. Get to a million. Nice. And these guys are the... That's spare too late. Oh. And there goes Iran. Killing itself as it should. We don't really do that one either. We're done with our land auction? Oh, actually we're not. Oh, okay. We'll do that one. That's organization loss moving. is pretty useful when you're fighting this direction, so... Yeah, I want the tank division trying to fight these guys off. Pretty difficult, but they still won, so. I'm feeling pretty good about that. Oh, no, we've lost 16,000 men now. That's not, not good enough. Yeah, by the time we, we resume together, this will definitely be zero, so. And we're out of manpower again, of course. Yay! Good job, guys. Let's go all the way. Go right there, to there, to there. Renudinsk. Blagoveshensk. Blagoshevensk. Blagoshevensk. Just want to cut it down, man. Just want to cut it down. We're building a lot of radar stations, too, so. Yeah, overall, not that bad. Oh, do we win? Hey, we won, guys. Yay. Not bad. We'll do this anyways if we can. And there you go. Of course, roads, once we run out of things, and air bases. Because I'm building a lot of air bases up just because we can. Um, yeah, overall, not too bad. Pretty easy. And I do apologize for that. Basically, I guess you could say half the campaign, and someone did say earlier it was over, but, you know, whatever. Uh, let's go ahead and core all this stuff up. 
That'd be very nice. Whee! And how much political power are we getting every day? None! As expected. So, reunify the motherland. Having defeated its last opponents on the free Russian soil, the Tsardom, born out of the city of Vyatka with a German-backed expedition, secured its hold in the Tsar country and prepares to join the international community. The politics of the Tsar's court remain generally unknown until recently, but the leading party inside the relatively democratic empire is the reformed constitutional Democrats, led the by the prominent advisor Roman Gul, Gul, of course, as leader of the cadets. <clears throat> Is known to be outspoken liberal and political scientists believe his influence may be able to maintain moderate policies in the country and prevent the rise of the national extreme nationalists. For now, though, His Imperial Majesty and the Prime Minister have announced their intentions to reopen relations with the rest of the world. A bright future awaits. A new empire. Cool, so that's going to be the end of this episode, which obviously is going to be one more episode after this, because we will take up the, Ru the Russians. We are the Russians. The Germans. But yeah, overall, not too bad. Uh, yeah, this campaign, it's very interesting seeing the liberal democracy path. I do apologize for not showing you the other half. And we've got a second decrease in poverty. Also, we're on Spartan Discipline, too. Look at that. Nice. That, um, so that's probably why we got a huge buff. From nothing to 7%, 7.5% more attack and defense and more organization. Nice. And where are we at with this? This is kind of ridiculous. Yeah, Vyaka might need to rework. At least the last half. But regardless, hope you enjoyed the episode. If you did, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow when we're going to spill a lot, a lot, a lot of German blood. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.